Hi there, my name is Jonathan Welton and I'm here to talk to you today about a program called The Bulletproof Husband. If you're watching this, uh, you probably are going through some rough stuff and I've been right there with you, but I'm gonna tell you a little bit of my story. I'm gonna assume you know nothing about me and I don't know how you found this video. Maybe a friend sent it to you, maybe your wife sent it to you, who knows? Maybe I sent it to you, but um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I am um, uh, 39 years old. I've been married 18 years. I have three young daughters. Right now they're nine, seven, and four years old. And uh, I've had quite a rocky road over the last four years in particular of my marriage. If I back up, I'll tell you a little bit more about me biographically. Um, I have my doctorate in theology. I've traveled to 35 countries, lecturing all around the world. I have uh, led teams on archeological tours all around the Mediterranean. I've written, brought it with me, 14 books, a few of them bestsellers. I had an online school with uh, 2,600 students at one point, teaching theology, uh, the supernatural, history of the Bible, things like that, covenants, and um, everything was thriving. It was thriving like crazy, but not everything was okay. At the core, I was not okay. At the core, our marriage was not okay. I, for years, we had spent most of our marriage on this crazy cycle of a peaceful period leading to me getting triggered, shutting down, stonewalling, um, emotionally uh, uh, suffocating myself, and then acting out and going and doing something. I, I would emotionally cheat, physically cheat, mentally cheat. I was, I was a liar. I had all kinds of ways of coping with the pain of feeling triggered, the pain of feeling triggered. And I would just uh, make a mess out of my life, out of our marriage. And then I would come back around, love bomb my wife, get us back connected again for a little bit. Then she would trigger me, I would get triggered, and the cycle would go around and around. And we spent, oh, a decade and a half in that cycle. And it was horrible and painful. And she felt abandoned and alone and this was her normal in our relationship and she didn't know different and so after years of this about 14 years of this in 2018 it things came to light and uh some of my inappropriate interactions with my staff uh were exposed to the light and it led to complete devastation devastation of the entire ministry collapsed uh, my finances collapsed, our marriage collapsed, my wife was humiliated, my reputation was destroyed. Everything, just down, down the toilet. That was 2018. I immediately got to work on myself. I knew, wow, I've been a real dirtbag here and I've got to fix this finally. Why? because I have three young children that I care about and I do care about my wife. And so I didn't know what to do, but I knew I had to try to fix it. So I went out and I found, I found an inner healing uh, counselor. He, he actually reached out to me, said, offered his time and we connected really well. And we started meeting, doing inner healing, emotional healing every day for three months. My wife and I were separated at the time. We got back together around Christmas of 2018. We thought things were doing so much better. We went through 2019. We thought things were continuing to do better. It wasn't the only thing I did. I actually wrote down a few things because it was, uh, as I started to write it down in my notes, I thought, oh my gosh, I did so many things. So I want you to hear, I have gone after healing for years before I found the Bulletproof Husband. Uh, and even before I crashed, I had tried other modalities. So here's a few of the things I tried over the years. I did the daily inner healing for three months. I went to Alaska for two solid weeks of an inner healing program up there. My wife and I did weekly marriage counseling for two years during the last four years. 
I went to Sexaholics Anonymous 12-step group and worked on walking the steps for six months. I went to an intensive narcissist uh, recovery program uh, and worked through that for, for a week. I have met with professional psychologists. I have been uh, um, treated by them in several different modalities. I've done brain echo technology uh, through Saraset. I've done Holosync, theta brainwave modalities, Zen meditation training. I've been to all of Tony Robbins' events. I've been trained as a coach in his, in his world. Uh, I've met with the president of Sex Addicts Anonymous, who has been on Dr. Phil and Oprah. I've read books, blogs, listened to podcasts, conferences, YouTube videos, and I've gained some real gems from all these different things. Yet at the end of the day, none of them actually helped me feel like a solid, authentic man. There was still this missing piece that didn't help me deal with my triggers. I would still get triggered. I would still feel emasculated. I would still not get the approval I was hoping for or the affirmation or the applause or the respect. I didn't feel respected. And so I would get triggered and I'd melt down. And I was like, how the hell do I get out of this cycle? I don't know how to do it. And so I'd gone down all these roads, but none of them gave me the roadmap for how to get to a peaceful, loving marriage. So then we get to the spring of 2020, you know, COVID lockdowns, the world is shut down. It's March, it's April, it's May. And my wife has lost hope. It's the cycle is back. She's meeting with a psychiatrist who's, who's pointing out to her, this isn't normal. This is not peaceful, this is not healthy, this is not the goal. Just because he did some inner healing, just because he did this or that, this is not where you wanna live in your marriage for the rest of your life. She was like, you're right, hell no, this is not, this is not the standard for me. And so she raised her standard, which led to a second separation. So I got kicked out again in April of 2020 and at that point, I was totally confused. I literally had tried everything I just named to you. I was like, I have nothing else to try. I have no idea where to turn. I have worked my tail off on this marriage. I've worked this, my tail off on myself. I don't know what to do here. And my advisors didn't really have anything new to offer. And so I was at a total loss. I was at a total loss. This is the spring of 2020 and I'm desperate, and I'm, I'm at the end of my rope. Was I suicidal? Yeah, most of my life, actually. But this was definitely one of my lowest moments, if not the lowest moment. Um, but I was also confused because I hadn't done anything different. I'd crashed the ministry two years earlier. I'd been working on myself for two years. I didn't get it. I was so clueless. In that same time window of March 2020, I got an excommunication letter from my home church from my best friend who is the senior pastor of the church. Official letter kicking me out permanently from the church. Um, my board of overseers from the ministry had sent out an, a scathing letter uh, basically telling everyone there's very little hope that I would ever change and that uh, it was it was. Uh, brutal. I had former staff members decide it was time to start airing out details of, of some of my indiscretions over the years. And so they start publishing stuff. It was all unleashed in March of 2020. It was, it was total chaos going on. So April, my wife, she's given up hope and she says, you, you've got to go. So I move out a second time. But this time it's not, hey, move out for a while because this trauma of you crashing everything. This time it's, uh, we're probably getting divorced because you've tried everything and you're still an asshole. Okay, I, I don't know what to do, but I don't want to get divorced and I will try anything. So I sign up for all these things that start showing up in my Facebook newsfeed. There's 
you know, these different men's programs. And I'm like, okay, let's see. This one had a free something. This one had a free something. Let's check them all out. So I'm getting my inbox filled with all these different programs. But one of them, the Bulletproof Husband, they were sending out a free daily video from this young guy, looked like early 30s. He's Hungarian. He's got an accent. But he'd send out these three minute clips where he would explain something about relationship or marriage or masculinity or femininity. And it was like, oh my gosh, this makes perfect sense. How does he understand this? Where is this coming from? And after watching that uh, for about a month through April, when she kicked me out, I signed up immediately. I didn't know anything about the program. I didn't know what I was signing up for other than I needed more of what this guy was saying. He knew what he was talking about. And so I signed up. I was shocked with what I actually found in the program. And let me get into that. So there's so many things and it's hard to really summarize. What did I find in the program? What is there that, uh, what is it? What is this program? How does it work? What is the content? But here's the biggies. First thing was it gave me a code. They showed me a code to live by as a man. And when you have that code for yourself figured out, they call it knowing your terms. When you know that code for yourself as a man, you never have to feel emasculated again. There's nothing my wife can ever say or do that ever makes me feel emasculated, period. I'd spent most of my life, we're talking 98% of my life, feeling emasculated. I grew up with, with a family with lots of mental illness and very scary women. And so I had this, this aversion toward femininity that made me feel terrified. And so I felt emasculated all the time. This led me to wanting to use women in a safe kind of way, like porn or other things like that, so that I would have femininity that was never making me feel emasculated. So I could only accept parts of feminine and not the other parts. And so I found this this one simple thing that was overwhelming was figuring out my terms, my code as a man to live by eradicated emasculation. It was shocking. I had waited my entire life to figure out how to not feel emasculated. Uh, second thing was a clear system for decisions. So for years, my wife and I, she would feel controlled then I would feel controlled or we'd both feel controlled at the same time. It was a constant power struggle in the relationship back and forth. Who's going to make decisions? How are we going to make decisions? All of this back and forth chaos. This I thought would never end. I, I, I had seen countless sermons and messages and podcasts where people talk about, you know, who's the head and who's in charge and who's the leader and who's the whatever. And all these debates about gender roles and egalitarian and complementarianism, their program and their approach wiped the slate clean and said, forget all that crap. It has nothing to do with any of that. That, that is nonsense. Here's what you need. You need a clear, simple system for how you make your decisions as a man. And they gave you that system. I was shocked. I'd spent my entire life in the church thinking this, trying to think this through, trying to come to an answer, a resolution of who's in charge and are we equal and how do we make decisions that are hard and blah, 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 whatever. Bunch of nonsense. It really boiled down to a simple, clear way to make decisions that cleared the path. Now she never feels controlled. I never feel controlled, gone. Power struggles out of the relationship. Number three was that they gave me a roadmap to know exactly where I was. Because if you back up, this is May, 2020. I just got slapped. This was a slap 
emotionally that said, get out, we're getting divorced, I have no hope for you, you're not going to change, we're done. This is the slap wake-up call that I had received. And when you get that slap, it puts you in stage zero. And a healthy, amazing, thriving relationship is stage five. And they gave me the roadmap of stage zero, one, two, three, four, five. What do you do in each stage? What do you not do in each stage? How do you address your relationship? Because otherwise, you, you jump into all this, I got to do this, I got to try to fix it, I got to do uh, turn this dial for love languages and over here for love and respect. And you're like trying to do all these tools that you've learned and heard over the years. And I need to set a boundary and I need to know, you need to know what stage you're in, and what to do in that stage until you get to the next stage and what to do in that stage till you get to the next stage you need a clear roadmap and that is is it was such a gift to actually have this roadmap in front of me and go okay this is exactly what i need to do and what i don't need to do for right now number four was they helped me actually remove emotional triggers, not to avoid them, not to manage them, but to actually remove them. The deep emotional work that a man needs to do is unique and different than the way women do it. Part of the problem is that most therapy has been developed around feminine ways of healing. For example, one statistic I saw was that in California, 90% of therapists are female. The industry is so lopsided and so confused that we don't know what to do for men and how to bring them healing. And so I had tried all kinds of things to manage my issues and I tried all kinds of things to fix it, but I hadn't gotten clear on how does a man deal with his triggers and actually pull these things out and get rid of them. So that was huge. Number five, they showed me the seven components of a solid apology, how to really take ownership and how to clean up the past. See, I had history with my wife. I had 14 years. At the point that she kicked me out the second time, I had 16 years or 15 years, something like that. At that point, 15 years, of, of this woman knowing me through being married together where I had destroyed trust. And in destroying that trust, I had to rebuild it through taking ownership, learning to take 100% responsibility for everything. And through the seven components to actually know how to really apologize, not I'm sorry, or I empathize with how I hurt you, or but all the pieces that are necessary to truly come back and say, here's what I did, here's why, where it came from, why I behaved that way, here's how I see the impact that's happened in my life, and all the steps that are truly necessary to bring cleaning and healing and ownership in an apology. And number six, and I could keep going, I literally could keep going for hours, but I just narrowed it down to six. But number six was about, they taught me how to restore trust. They taught me that trust is a currency in a relationship and that your wife is the bank manager and she holds a, a um, deposit record and a withdrawal record of the trust in the relationship. And I had gotten myself in a deficit of owing, owing her, the bank, a million dollars of trust currency. I was overdrafted by a million dollars of trust. And how was I going to restore that? How was I going to repay that, rebuild that, pay off that debt? They showed me how to do that, how to rebuild that trust. And there's lots of there's lots of stuff out there about trust, but this was some of the fastest, most powerful tools I'd ever seen. My wife was seeing a therapist in that spring of 2020, and he had said to her, in 40 years of working with men, uh, men like your husband don't change. 
And that was part of her getting to the point of giving up hope on our relationship, of giving me that slap finally. But within 90 days, 90 days of being in the Bulletproof Husband, I went from negative 1 million in my trust account with my wife back to zero. How do I know I went back to zero? At zero, she had been sharing every week, meeting with her psychiatrist, and he said to her, I've never seen this before. This is like a miracle. Whatever they're doing in that men's program is a miracle. I agree with you. You should invite your husband home and restore your relationship. She invited me home and we started at zero. But I started before that at negative a million in my emotional trust account in the relationship before I got back to zero. Now, zero is not the goal, but when you're in debt a million, zero is a great goal. But the goal is to be positive a million. And they teach you how to go from negative all the way to positive. How do you build that trust all the way up here? And that's why I can tell you the fruit that I've seen in my life. So May 2020, May 3rd, 2020, I joined the Bulletproof Husband. August 1st, 2020, my wife invited me home. I made it to zero in three months of doing the hard work, pulling my triggers out, restoring trust, knowing my code, knowing my terms, living them, all of the work I've just described to you. And by September, the program actually invited me, uh, the leaders, the three master coaches said, we want to invite you into the first batch of coaches to get trained to be one of our coaches. I joined the coach training program. I did it for 18 months. I became the first certified coach in the program. They said, we want you to write the book for our material, and that's coming out in 2023, uh, the Bulletproof Husband book. And so I've become a major part of this program, and I work with men every week. I see the same issues constantly. People who are approval seeking, who are trying to numb their pain, people who are feeling emasculated, they feel disrespected, they're not trusted by their wife, they feel controlled. Men, I get it. I see it every day. I talk to men every day who are going through this, and I'm telling you there are real answers, and they're not everywhere. There's a lot of junk and waste your time garbage out there, but at the end of the day, there are real answers and Bulletproof Husband has them. And I want you to know that because I don't want you to sit in the same place where I was in April of 2020 thinking I'd tried everything. I worked my tail off. I had. I had tried everything up to that point and it had failed me up to that point to actually achieve the fruit that I needed in my life. I was not having the fruit and results in my marriage and in my relationship, even to myself, that I wanted. It wasn't working. But now I can tell you the fruit that has come from my life, the fruit that's come from these tools in this relationship. And somewhere down below, you can actually see a video from my wife where she shares from her perspective if you want to hear about the fruit firsthand, hear it from her because I could make up a story and tell you I have amazing fruit. But when you hear it from the mouth of my wife, you'll know this is legit. But I'll tell you from my perspective, the relationship is fully restored. My wife has major trust in me. She has a deep, profound respect for who I've become as a man. We have an intimate sex life like we've never had before, at a level we've never had before. Arguments have ended. The power struggle is gone. I never feel emasculated in our relationship. And there's peace. There's peace in our communication. There's peace in our family. There's peace in our home. And the amount of guys I hear who just, I just want to be at peace. I love this woman. I married this woman. I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. Now she drives me crazy. She nags me. She picks at me. She doesn't trust me. She disrespects me. She controls me. She's emasculating. I just want peace with her. I have, I have 
peace with my wife. I have respect. I have her trust. I feel like a man. I feel like a man. This is the gift that I got by being a part of this program. And I want you to know about it. And I want every man to know about the principles that are in this. That's why I said, yeah, I'll write your book. Absolutely, let's do this. The whole world needs to hear this. Men everywhere need this. I, I tried so many things. I wish I could have all the time back. I wish I could have all the money back. People sometimes go, whoa, whoa, it's three, John, it's $300 a month. I go, yeah, that's one hour with a divorce lawyer. That's one hour of paying a divorce lawyer. The average divorce costs over $30,000. So you can sit around and go, well, I don't have $300. While you're talking on a $1,000 phone, paying half that just for the phone bill every month. How many arguments I would, I would give $300 to, to get rid of and take back? the hurtful things that were said both ways over the years. Don't hold back. Don't wait until your wife slaps you. If you could get your head on straight before it gets to that point, you could save your relationship a lot of pain. But a lot of guys, most guys, what they will do is they'll hear about this and they'll go, oh, wow, well, that sounds interesting. That's cool. All right, whatever. Maybe your wife sent this to you and you're like, oh, that's all right, all right. And she's running out of hope in the relationship. And then when she's finally got to the bottom of the bucket and hope is all gone and she slaps you, then you go, oh, now I need to do something. And now you're starting at a negative deficit of negative $1 million dollars. When you could have got to work on yourself at negative $250,000, it would have been a lot wiser. It's typical. It's the guy who waits until he's 200 pounds overweight and then has a massive heart attack before he finally loses the weight. Instead of, hey, you're 40 pounds overweight? Get it in order now. Go deal with it. So I want to challenge you. Maybe today's the day you wake up. Maybe today's the day you start rebuilding the trust. You get rid of the emasculation. You get rid of all those triggers and the crazy cycle that your relationship is on. And you start heading toward peace. Peace in your relationship. Peace in your life. Peace for your kids. Your kids don't care about your $300. Put down the money, fix your family, fix your marriage, fix your life. Your kids are worth it. I think they are. All right, that's it. That's all I have to say. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. And um, at the end of the day, we do this for the kids. I mean, that's, that's our core purpose is that not one kid would feel the pain of growing up in a broken home. And that's what motivates all of us as men, as fathers, as husbands. So God bless you. Have a great day.